So today we are going to talk about how uh, you on multiple projects are using WeatherTrack to reduce your maintenance costs. And I plugged this last week. Um, oh, first of all, let me introduce you for the record. Uh, Mark Hurd with me from Denver Public Schools. What is your title with Denver Public Schools, Mark? I'm the grounds manager. Okay. So Mark and I have been working together for many years um, and he was previously working for Davis County Public Schools in Utah. And we, at that time, uh, I was blown away by how innovative your approach to water management was. I am a weather track nerd right down to the core. And I love to see new and um, bold takes on how our technology is used to achieve um, desired outcomes. And when we talked to you, um, it, your story was very unique because everybody I talk to talks about the water savings and the dollar savings uh, attached to the water bill. But you actually put together a very keen uh, metric where you could measure the labor savings that you were getting out of WeatherTrack. Can you explain that? Yeah, so one, one thing that um, public schools uh, have, have um, a challenge with is personnel. Um, we don't have a big budget. Uh, public education, uh, a lot of people think that there's a lot of money in public education and stuff. But when, when it really trickles down, I mean, there is money in the classroom and et cetera. But when it really trickles down, um, we don't have the personnel uh, that we need in maintenance. Um, for instance, I, I just did a proposal for our school district the other day. Uh, again, I try to point out what each of my irrigation techs have to see. So right now, currently in Denver Public Schools, again, I'm struggling with the irrigation aspect of having enough personnel. Um, currently, I have 220 sites. Um, it ends up being about 2,400 acres uh, of turf that my guys are maintaining. And again, I look at the labor savings that each of my guys, I only have five people um, currently employed in the irrigation department. Five guys, uh, 220 sites. Correct. So to, to calculate that out for you, on a rough average, each of my guys are seeing about 30,000 sprinkler heads a week for us to stay on top of it. Um, so again, this is where we optimize weather track to be our eyes and our ears that are out there because we don't have the personnel that can roll as fast. And so over in Davis, um, obviously I had a short staff over there too. So I had to start thinking, how can this equate to money? How can, how can weather track equate to money on my side as far as showing the savings and what it does? And when we put that together, I started to add in what I call rollouts. Um, every time that we have an emergency, I have to roll a person in a truck. And I was trying to calculate for myself how much money that was saving me as far as overtime and everything else and the cost of that truck, you know, rolling. And so we started to calculate out uh, um, what I'm paying that person, how much per, you know, miles per gallon, everything else on being able to see if weather track if I can turn it off from a computer or our smartphone or anything, then that's a, that's a, that saves me on a rollout is what I call it. I'm not, I'm not paying that person to uh, get in a pickup truck. I'm not paying him, um, you know, minimum of five hours, according to the a good negotiated agreement that we have with our, our personnel. I'm not having to pay him a minimum of five hours um, and et cetera. Um, because obviously we could turn it off with the rain, you know, the rain pause feature, you know, if we have OptiFlow or anything, we can actually see that flow meter go to zero so that, that we don't have to question if it really is off or if it's not off because, you know, as irrigation people and especially managers, our biggest fear is that we assume that it's off and find out that it really is not off and now we have some serious damage. So, and you sit there and wrestle with yourself as a manager, an irrigation manager going, I'm just gonna get in the truck and go find out. You know, I, I gotta know for myself. One thing that we've been very lucky and blessed with, with having the OptiFlow feature is um, it's never, it's not proved us wrong yet. 
when it when that when that meter says zero, it's it's zero. There's nothing flowing. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I I maybe a nerd like Ben or whatever, but I had to still get in the truck just to see for myself, you know, for the first couple times. Uh, but again, I'm a salary employee, so I'm not going to pay anybody to go out there. But just for my own gee whiz, I, I, I rolled out to see. But we started to calculate that with those features that WeatherTrack offers um, to be able to shut stuff down, be able to see that it's turned off. Um, we were able to save in Utah anyways, we were able to save equivalent to two full-time employees uh, with running WeatherTrack. So that's um, huge. So, yeah. I mean, that's you talk about, and that's two full-time employees with salaries and benefits and retirement and everything else that we saw in that first year of data collection from our side to see that we could potentially, I, I can't hire them, but yet that's what it equates to of knowing what WeatherTrack is telling me on a daily basis. Right, just using we were those able to say that. That, that WeatherTrack provides you, uh, reduced the workload by what, you're saying 80 hours a week? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and what, what specifically are the features that you're talking about? What are the most beneficial things for somebody managing a portfolio of your size? Our, our biggest thing that, that is the biggest help to me is to our alerts. On, on the alert page, it, I mean, really you get to pick as a manager, a water manager, you can pick, you know, what alerts you want to hear each day. Some of them may be vital. Um, for us, um, obviously water running outside of our water windows and stuff like that is huge in the school system because there's nothing worse than um, sending a kid home because he's wet and muddy or something like that because the water came on. Um, they, or angry uh, soccer coach. So, soccer coaches get a bad rap on this show all the time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep. And so, anyways, with those features and those alerts that you want to pick. Um, so for us, obviously, flow is a big issue for us um, outside that window. Um, our water windows are huge. Um, you know, zone run times, uh, leak <laughs> alerts. I mean, those are just a few of the features that that I want to pay attention to every day as a water manager um, because they have big returns for me in the future, you know, in the long run. One thing about our, our leak alerts and stuff like that is, again, you know, it's hard to have standing water around, around schools and stuff like that because not only is the standing water there, but it attracts everything else, you know, bees, you know, unwanted vegetation, moss, everything else, which are all things that I can't have around around those kids. Um, so those kind of features are really, really important to me. And, and to any water manager, you can pick what's important to you. And WeatherTrack gives you a lot of alert features that you know you can pick and choose from. I, I lose you, Ben. Nope, I'm here. I, okay. I just got a message that my internet connection is unstable. I don't know <laughs> what that means, but <laughs> um, I did hear what you just were talking about. Um, and I want to jump into a little bit. One of the things that I like to do on this show is demo that stuff. Um, and so I want to just do a quick demonstration of some of the tools. Have you walk me through some of the things that um, you might do that our users might be able to do. Yeah, Ben froze on us again. Okay, I think I'm back. You're back. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, the shoddy internet connection I'm trying to overcome right now with my air cart. So. Um, let's see if that works. So I want to share screen real fast and talk about <clears throat> these are the things that uh, we discussed in our pre-production meeting, right? We talked about, um, first and foremost, the visibility that WeatherTrack provides by being a cloud-based uh, infrastructure and giving you the information that you need. We talked about your alert management, the rain pause that is your go-to tool. 
and um, some of the other things that uh, we discussed the scheduling engine and how not having to go and adjust schedules every week is saving you time, as well as changing start times and water restriction information. So um, let's have a quick look at weathertrack.net and walk through some of those things. Um, if you are just logging in for the first time, what is your standard protocol? What is it that you check first when you log into weathertrack.net? What I'm, what I'm looking for is I want to look at my main thing and I want to look at what alerts I have on the system. Okay. Um, and, and again, right here is a perfect example. I can see exactly in a really quick overview how my system is um, in that first box up there in the top in the gray box. You know, right now, obviously, you can, you can see what's offline. Uh, again, in public education and play fields, the, those are the number one things that I want to look at. Um, how many controllers I have offline and why. Um, obviously, we can see the one obviously is winterized on, on, on this chart, but it, you know, whatever you have, it, you know, you can see, you can see if you have any of them. Uh, one thing that I love about WeatherTrack, if you're not familiar with it, um, I love that you can override the off switch from the computer. That was, a, that was a big thing when I first started WeatherTrack that I had kept mentioning to the WeatherTrack team. Uh, that I wish that we could override the off switch as a manager. And lo and behold, it happened. Absolutely. Um, the, Wait, let me drill down that. on this one thing first. When we were talking about controller status, one of the things that I like that I think that we should highlight is the ability to drill down on this information, right? So you were talking mm -hmm. in your workflow, you come here and you want to see what your systems are doing. Uh, and we've got three controllers that are offline. So one of the things that I think is often overlooked is the ability just to click on that information and drill down. Now, it doesn't pay you any dividends to know that you have three controllers that are offline. What you need to know is which controllers those are. So um, when you are looking at these interactive or these tools on the alerts and operations dashboard, uh, we do make it easy to drill down and easy to find the stuff that you're looking for as a manager that is actionable, right? Correct. And one thing, Ben, I want to point um, when you clicked on that, the one thing that's really nice is uh, it has a feature in here on event days and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And if you look at when you looked at that one that was offline, your very first top box stated that it was movie night. Oh, so, yeah. Right up here. Um, that, you know, again, as you start going through here, you're, you're going to pick up those things really quick because uh, that's the first thing my eye drew to is that it was a scheduled event off. So for yep. me as a water manager, that is a key feature, like a key ball game, or you have a state baseball game, or you have something, you can put those in up to 30 days in advance. And so you don't have to remember last minute, hey, did I do that? So all of a sudden state baseball game night, you don't, you watered the night before and you can, you can schedule those, uh, which are great features to, to, I just wanted to point that out, Ben, yeah, as you were clicking are, through there, that th those are key features as a water manager for to sure. know exactly why immediately. On this page here, we can look at all of those things that you just talked about. We looked at uh, your first point that I, I derailed you from um, was the ability to just check and see if the controller is on or off. The irrigation 101, right? Did I, mm -hmm. did I actually turn the controller back on when I was done making repairs? Um, and so the, you were right, you were on the leading edge of, of pushing this feature into existence. Uh, but this has been with us for many, many moons now. This is something that you can do both on weathertrack.net and on the mobile app as well. So you can do it from your pocket, um, which we've showed in previous episodes. Uh, one that we've never highlighted, I don't think, on this show is the event pause, where you can go in here and, uh, to your points, long in advance of needing to turn the controllers off, you can put in this event pause that will ensure that you don't have irrigation kicking on in the middle of some scheduled event, which I imagine on your sites is a big, big deal. Those, mm -hmm. those fields get used all the time, right? Oh, Yeah. So in here, we've got a, an example of a soccer tournament, right? But you can go in here and either schedule a one-time task, give it a 
the beginning of a pause and the end of a pause. In this case, uh, we've got a very old one um, that just turned the controller off for one day and half an hour. But you can also make it a recurring task. If you have um, a, a soccer practice on a field that is the same time every day, you can go in and say, hey, I need an event pause every weekday for two hours starting at four o'clock or whatever. And you know, Ben, this is a really good thing for those who deal with community use, uh, parks, um, other, other individuals that have community use groups. Um, that they can once that once the community comes in and reserves like they can reserve our fields and stuff like that once that is made and that community use is put in then that's key information for us to make sure that our client at that time now not our students but our client at that time is guaranteed not to have water run during their practice time because as soon as that usage agreement comes down and it comes across our desk this is where I put that in that, that I now have a community use agreement from this time to this time, which also protects that water window a little bit better uh, to make sure that I don't start watering when that event is still going on. Yeah, that, that would be an unpopular thing. I, I can mm -hmm. imagine. <laughs> Especially when they reserve it. Yes. And then one of the things that we talked extensively about yesterday was your use of this rain pause feature. So this is something that you can do on a single controller right here. We'll talk about um, a, a couple of other ways that you can do it. Talk about how, uh, why you use this feature and a few examples of when this was handy for you. Well, and I don't, and I'm not gonna say that I use it the right way, but I use it the way that works for me. Um, a lot of times if I'm rolling up onto a site and I have water running, um, and, but I need to check something else, I can quickly throw in a user rain pause for one day. It will stop that irrigation while I'm on site or whatever I'm checking. Um, and then I can also take it back off and it will resume that, that right. watering schedule right where I left it. Um, the other thing is too, we get a lot of calls, even though as bad as we push to, to let us know what's going on on the sites, it inevitably, it happens every single year, time in, time out. Mark, we're, we're right in the middle of a um, track meet and the water came on, you know, and I can sit here at home and I can tell the person on the other end of the line, hey, just give me a couple seconds, just confirm to me that it's off. And I, and I can throw in a rain pause right then um, for one day. And during their event that they didn't tell us about, it, they all of a sudden go, are you here? are you on site? And I'm like, no, I'm at home. And they're like, well, the water just went off. And I'm like, good, great. That's good news. You're welcome. I mean, you're <laughs> you're, you're going to be able to finish your track meet, you know, right now or something like that. But we use it, we use it a ton for that feature, not saying it's the right feature for it. But the other nice part about it is, is if I take it back off that rain pause, you know, after they're done with their track meet in an hour, then it resumes watering from where it left off. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, that's what that's a great feature. So I, I we about how you do that online on weathertrack.net on the manage page. Uh, and then Mark brought up this on the go sort of idea. So I thought it would be valuable to show you where that lives in WeatherTrack Mobile. So if you log into WeatherTrack Mobile, you would choose your site and choose the proper controller. Once you are on the controllers page, that is a controller level command where you just come here and you see all of the different controller level commands. We're talking about this pause. And what I like about WeatherTrack Mobile is that when you select your pause for this controller, after it saves and confirms, it actually shows you uh, the time and date that that pause will expire. It gives the, the, the pause is a countdown feature and um, it expires at the program A start time. So it's great to see um, how this pause will affect your scheduled irrigation and when scheduled irrigation will pick back up. Hey Ben, before you click off there really quick, mm -hmm. um, another big key feature that we use a lot in, in DPS is that percent adjust right there. Um, right. We, we will constantly get calls from a custodian or somebody or a, a gym teacher saying, hey, the left side of the football field is really, really wet 
and I can immediately go in and do a percentage adjust on a single zone um, and, you know, plus or minus whatever they, you know, it needs for a few days. And then I can revisit it with the, with that coach or whatever and say, Hey, do we have it dialed in? And you can, and you can really dial it in. Cause a lot of times, you know, even though fields are supposed to be less than 1%, you get that low spot in a field that all the water's draining to, but it's, that's a great feature right there for a really quick adjust. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about that last week. In fact, that is like the easy button for adjustment because mm -hmm. it, makes so much sense right you want more you hit plus you want less yep. you hit minus uh i i totally agree with that um all right so we and one more one more quick question ben okay. uh just for everybody who ha has uh we also have a whole bunch of community gardens in denver um obviously for those that you know that you know denver and big cities like that uh a desert scape for food sometimes um, so on our schools, we have a lot of community gardens and that if you go back into that master valve override, um, we have our windows that are water windows that we allow water again because we're watching that main line. But inevitably, I'll always have a call that says, hey, I came out here to water the garden today and I don't have any water or it was on for a couple of seconds and then it went off. Um, my hose is now empty. What happened? I don't know what happened. Um, so just realize that that's a great feature to have. Also, if you have a ma uh, master valve flow sensor, um, that you can override that master valve and give your gardeners water when they show up when they're not supposed to. Right. And when you've added on a master valve and flow sensor onto these existing systems that they're used to not having master valves. So they've had water on demand forever, mm -hmm. right? We add that master valve and all of a sudden the water is shut off at the source. What this master valve override does is not only uh, apply current to a normally closed master valve, open up that normally closed master valve, but it also suspends the leak alerts telling you that uh, people are using that water because obviously you know that they are, you have turned yeah. on the master valve override to allow that to happen. So uh, another great feature, another great workflow. One of the things that I wanna bounce back to is water restrictions because we are headed into drought season <laughs> and it is, all the rage on all the water boards and all the conversations that I'm in. Um, and so water restrictions are looking like an inevitable part of this summer. Um, and one of the things that can reduce those truck rolls is using the weather track to make those changes, right? So can you walk us through an example of how you would use this water days and times access? Um, yeah, we, so most of the time, uh, our water windows in, in public education, because our grounds are used until usually 10 to 11 o'clock at night, every single night, our water windows fall between 11 o'clock at night until five o'clock in the morning. So we have really tight water windows and we literally have to maximize our main line. If you're not familiar with that feature, um, ben, ben will have a, I'm sure, a, a webinar on maximizing the main line um, because we really have to have that feature because <laughs> we're, we're going to have a really jammed, uh, trying to get a lot of, you know, most of our schools, especially our high schools and stuff like that have 249 zones that have to, we have to get through. And when you only have six to seven hours to get through it, it's a push. So you'll learn to maximize that main line a lot. Um, but anyways, most of our stuff, uh, again, like I say, uh, if we can start the fronts of our buildings at, at nine o'clock at night, um, we will do all of our flower beds and everything on those features on that first main line um, and get those smaller areas starting to water uh, while our fields are still being used. But um, you have a lot of options. Matter of fact, Ben, I'm going to let you help but you, there's so many options that being honest with you, you just have to pick what works for you and just realize that WeatherTrack has really pulled out all the stops when they think of, when you say a company that sits there and thinks like Ben or like, you know, we always call him the water nerd. But anyways, they sit there and I think literally all they sit there and, at night and think about what else possibly could somebody want 
and and this is a good company and that's one of the reasons why i like this company is because you might be laying there as a water manager in bed at night and go that might that that would be a good thing to possibly see if we can incorporate and obviously when you bring it up to them um they take you pretty serious and they like hey now, that's great. You know, we'll pass that on to the engineers or whatever else and see if it's something they can incorporate. And the one thing that I like about the innovation of this company is you take that idea and you, you know, in some of the other companies that I've worked with, it's like, oh, yeah, that was a good idea, but that's not on our, our design plan right now. But yet I've seen a lot of features come from this company where you bring up an idea or something that would possibly work better and that and don't be surprised if you don't see it incorporated in the next release. We pride go, ourselves wow, on how that was fast. Yeah, we pride ourselves on how we listen, right? That's how we're mm -hmm. continually getting better is listening to great water managers like yourself and, and incorporating your workflows, incorporating your field experience into how we can save you steps, right? That's really what it's all about. And really what the conversation today was designed to be was how do we leverage the smart controller to save time, to save truck rolls, to save mm -hmm. on maintenance cost, right? That um, enables you to do more with less as you're always pushed to do in the public school environment. Absolutely. Um, so we are running thin on time now. Uh, I've got just about two minutes left. So um, I wanted to present you with the question that I offer to all of my first time guests. And um, we've already talked about it a little bit, but I ask all my first time guests, what does WeatherTrack save you? WeatherTrack saves me a big headache. <laughs> um, because of the features and everything that it offers and what I'm asking it to do. Um, again, we didn't get into a lot of the other features as far as asset management and everything else that I'm required to do, you know, for DPS and, and to, be the best steward of money. Um, this 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 program has allowed me a, a great toolbox to, you know, to carry around with me every day. It doesn't matter if it's in asset management. It doesn't matter if it's in. I'm only allowed, you know, so much water per site. I'm only allowed so much money. It allows me a checkbook um, to be able to say I'm al I'm allowed, you know. $15,000 on this site and I can't exceed that in the budget. Um, it takes, you know, we can calculate water costs and stuff like that and say, this is how much money we can water at that site. Um, again, as far as managing runoff, it's, it's just giving me a huge toolbox um, of features. And one of the things that uh, with that site asset management toolkit uh, that rang in my brain is if you use that appropriately, we are uh, providing you a great tool to show all of the work that your guys are doing, right? That's where mm -hmm. you can show on paper, what did you say, 33,000 heads a week or whatever right. you guys are checking, right? It gives you, uh, outside of just the scheduling or the flow monitoring, it gives you a tangible tool to escalate up how much work and how much is on every guy's plate. So. Uh, I really think that that's awesome. And, and one other really quick thing it allows is the reporting features that this this program has is is really huge. And, and it saved me, I believe, I wouldn't say I would have got fired, but it saved me a lot of headache um, because we had, again, a state baseball game being played. And the coach calls me at 10 o'clock and goes, man, my field is flooded what in the world happened? You know, we, we can't play here today on a state baseball game. And, you know, and I went back in the report and I was able to pull a report um, that, uh, the it, you know, that it was manually turned on at four o'clock in the morning. And so for me, not having the tools that I have with this program, I would have been the scapegoat um, during that state baseball game that our, our crew made a mistake and had water turned on. But the nice part about this feature is it showed that it was turned on manually at the valve at four o'clock in the morning. Um, and so we looked at it as vandalism at that time, because obviously they wanted to postpone a ball game because we found out, you know, again, we're not pointing fingers at anybody, but yet 
one of the the pitchers wasn't ready for the ball game. So it was a vandalism situation that they needed to hold off on the ball game for a day or so. Um, but anyway, somebody turned it on. We don't know who it was, but it was turned on manually. But you can run reports like that. I mean, again, it, it's it's a probably a single case ever happening in your career. But for me, as having that as a tool of saying what happened and why did it happen and how did it happen, this is a program uh, Weather Track offers in that reporting that will kind of help you nail down that as a water manager, big, huge savings and a job savings, depending on if you're on a golf course or wherever you're at, Seriously. you could, you could lose your job quick. Absolutely. All right. That was awesome. Thank you, Mark. I'm going to real quick, give a plug for next week. We do, oh, I'm on the, got to get back to the PowerPoint plug for next week. We are going to highlight how OptiFlow is helping a HOA in Arizona save water. And if you know my OptiFlow nerd story, you know that OptiFlow doesn't adjust the schedules. Uh, and so it'll be an interesting tell about how optimizing the schedules is actually helping our users save water. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, so join us next week when we'll have Dwayne Thompson from Four Peaks Landscape in Phoenix, Arizona, and we will talk about some OptiFlow fun, which we haven't done in a good long time now. So um, Mark, thank you so much for making time for us. I know that this was a hard one to get on the calendar for us. So I really appreciate your flexibility and your time and your input and your perspective. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ben, for having me. It is always a pleasure. And until next week, thank you guys. We'll, we'll see you next week for Smart Water Wednesdays. Thanks.